Hello and welcome to a data visualization concept review module. This uh, module is going to look at scale, symbology, data aggregation, and the modifiable area unit problem as it uh, influences the interpretation of different visualizations or maps. I'm Ann Johnson, Associate Director of the Geotech Center. The Geotech Center is a National Science Foundation funded grant to help uh, improve and re provide resources for geospatial programs. We're going to be looking at how visualizing your data in a map can influence how it is interpreted. Specifically, we're going to look at how the scale of the map can affect that, as well as the modifiable area unit problem. And we'll also look at the use of colors and symbology in the map type and how it will influence that interpretation by your audience. Other concept modules do provide more in-depth reviews of different aspects of cartography, and they can be found on the Geospatial Technology Center website. So how should data be visualized? Well, it's really the person who's creating the map or the cartographer's job to decide just what data will be visualized and how it will be visualized. And they look at the purpose of the map, who the audience is, and how it will be viewed. Is it going to be in a paper map? Or is it going to be online, a website? Is it going to be interactive? But all uh, maps and their cartography have to be selective in what it presents. It's impossible to show every feature in an area that is covered by the map. So the cartographer has to know what to show, what to admit, what scale the map should be, and what area or boundaries are used for the data. We can also look at different types of maps. Is it going to be a chloropath, a dot density, or other things? Another important aspect is how they choose their colors and how they will be looking at categories or quantitative or qualitative classification of that data. We'll also look at how map projections influence how the data is visualized. And this is particularly important if you're going to not normalize by the area of the aggregated uh, boundary you're using. We'll also look at piracy issues. You know, can an individual from the data visualization be identified? Probably should not. Individuals generally should not be individually identifiable. Here's just two examples. One on the left represents a type of map that concludes all features in an area. We often see this as a road map. Uh, nothing in particular is emphasized, but everything within that region that can be shown is shown. On the right, a very different type of map. It includes features that are only directly related to the topic. So up above, it's soil moisture. So it does weakly outline the states and, and lakes and water bodies, but it emphasizes the soil moisture content. Different types of maps are uh, used for different types of audiences and different types of topics. And these are just a couple of examples, a cartogram or uh, a flow process diagram and the cartography has to decide which type of map best represents his data and how it can be visualized. Here we're just looking at two examples, a chloropeth map with a, a ramp of a median rent in 1990, and then we can use proportional symbols on the two maps on the right to show different values. This is showing a map scale. So we talk about large scale maps or small scale maps. Large scale maps, like the uh, map on the lower left, is of Oregon. It's showing a smaller uh, area, but with greater detail than the map on the right, which is a small scale map that shows a larger area with less detail. So that's the difference here, large scale versus small scale maps. I want to emphasize that examples used in this module are from the coronavirus pandemic. And I think more people were interested in what and where and more maps were being published. Uh, the maps provided significant help for people to understand what was happening near them or globally and over time, temporarily, what is 
today what is projected in the future. The examples are used not to criticize the attempts. I think they were wonderful to help inform the people, but I really want to illustrate how visualizations can be more informative in the future. This is an example of a modifiable aerial unit problem. So aggregating the data to different types of aerial boundaries or extents. So on the left, we have it by county, and each county uses the data of uh, important for that county. The map on the right aggregates them into states, and I can think you can see the difference. The map on the left clearly shows the center of the United States as having many fewer uh, confirmed cases, where the map on the right, uh, it doesn't really as clearly show this as you see it. We do see California, uh, New York, New Jersey as being dark in both instances, but we can really see, especially like in the state of Washington, where uh, cases were confined to several counties on the west, northwest. Here we're looking at a small scale map, a, a map. Uh, one thing, it's a Mercator projection, so the countries are distorted in their size. And we're looking at uh, the color, which is the black uh, background for the oceans, and then a color ramp uh, for the different uh, levels of uh, confirmed cases. So it's hard to really distinguish some of the colors, the bright pink of the US versus the darker salmon. I'm, I'm not sure what it's saying to me. To me, it's saying U.S. has more, and, and that is probably true, but uh, it's just not as easy to identify, and all the rest of the world is, is the same color, so maybe more color uh, categories would have been helpful. This is a dot centroid of the data boundary and the color selection, so it's showing two things. Uh, one is the centroid of the country, uh, especially in Europe, Africa, and South America. But in the United States, it's not the country that's used as a centroid, but cities and counties. So it's actually mixing two types of boundaries within the same representation. This is a comparison of two maps that were made about the, the, the pandemic, the coronavirus in the US. On the left, we're using a color scheme of black and red dot density map. And on the right, it's still a dot density map, but you can see that the dots are transparent, so you can see dots below the dots. It's also a, a good map projection. And the color scheme is, I, I believe, easier to see the data and, and really look at different areas than the map on the left. Also, uh, anytime you do data, things can happen. And this is just one uh, problem here. I see a dot in the middle of the uh, South Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and if I go into the data set, I can see that it's actually Virginia. So it's probably just a, a lack of a minus sign on the latitude and longitude that, that's ending this. But th these data were compiled so quickly and, and are so useful that minor things should be overlooked. But it, it, it is another way that you should, after you've created your map, give it a really good close look as to its accuracy and any issues or problems. Uh, one of the things that I noted too with some of the data in the US when I zoomed in, is there a why are there such regularities in the dot density. Well, it's using the centroid of the counties, but I'm thinking that maybe the centroids, the uh, locations were actually uh, eliminated some of the decimal places. And also I'm wondering if maybe some of the rounding and locations also were influenced by the, the large cities that were in that same area. Here's an interesting one. I, I believe it's pretty informative. It's all by country. So you see the US has just one dot in the centroid of the, of the nation. And it's uh, got a good map projection. 
and it has symbology that is also transparent as well as uh, different sizes. I think the only thing I couldn't find easily was its legend, but it's really a good example of, of good color scheme, of good map projections, and of good symbology. Here's one uh, that is uh, looking at confirmed cases by county, and it's got a good map projection. But I still wonder if some of the data in the center of the country or in Nevada, Southern Oregon, uh, and maybe even in some of the south uh, eastern parts of the country, is the data all there? You know, should you question not only the map but also the data on which it's based? You know, do all the uh, counties have the same testing rates, or are they not doing the same testing rates? And they so they don't share confirmed cases just because they weren't tested. So another thing to do whenever you see a map is look at the metadata, look at what data it represents and how that data was connect, collected and updated. This is a map by Chris Barkley and it was canated, uh, created in, for Canada and it's based on regional health authorities in Canada. And you can see it's a pretty good aggregation of data that is significant for those health authorities. And you can see the hot spots. Um, very interesting map, good legend, pretty uh, useful if you're in Canada. This was another way to look at data. So it's not really these dots are actually on the left are people on the beach during the spring using their cell phones. So the cell phone uh, authority uh, use that data. Now it's not identified to a person, so Tektronic uh, just collected anyone using their cell phone on the beach, kept those same numbers, and then later they projected on where those cell phones uh, returned after spring break. And I think it's an interesting uh, map, and I would be very interested to see how uh, the, the confirmed cases uh, either increased or didn't increase for those locations where you see a significant number of cell phones returning to different locations. This is a uh, new map. It was, uh, this is must emphasize it's not on the corona data. It is an example from Esri's ArcGIS Pro Space Time MOOC on spatial analysis. So each one of these stacks of cubes represent the same location over time. So each cube is a different time frame. And someday maybe they will take all of the data that we're gathering with this pandemic and create a space time visualization to really look at how things changed over time. Again, I wanna emphasize that this was not the corona data. So in conclusion, when you visualize your data for any variable, you, you as the cartographer or you as the person uh, viewing that map should really understand and know what data was get used and what how it was visualized. They should also understand that modifiable aerial unit problem and use appropriate boundaries that really let you know what is happening with uh, regionally and, and map scale and map projection. Also, colors are important, and colors can have meaning, uh, and as well as the symbology used can help understanding it. Also, several of the really good maps were lacking one thing, they were lacking a legend. So even though the map was really very good, if you don't have a legend, you're not sure what the symbology means. And one thing I didn't emphasize before, each of them could should include an acknowledgement for any data sources. There are additional re concept review modules on the Geotech Center website. That's geotechcenter.org. Uh, if you need more in-depth information on a concept, there are also model courses that include these topics. I, I want to say thank you. My name is Ann Johnson. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please do contact me.